Hello, boys and girls. Pearl of Wisdom here from BPAL Picks. And we have been doing trade videos after trade videos after trade videos. And people have been loving it. And I love it. It's fun talking to you guys down there in the comment section. We did, we did Kane Taves from Chicago and JT Miller. We just did a JT Miller trade into the land there as well. That one's still going. I'm talking to people in the Facebook groups and in my comment section like crazy right now about that one. Make sure you are too. And we're going to get into a really interesting topic on the next one. And to tell you the honest truth, there's a lot of facts and figures and stuff that are up in the air about the player that we're about to talk about. And that's what makes it interesting. And that's why I'm doing the video. So sub yourself up and comment in the comment section and tell me what you think, because I think I'm going to get slammed by all sides on Mr. Huberdo in the Calgary for the Calgary Flames. Yes, that's right. The player they just picked up from Florida, who is an unrestricted free agent right now. Uh, not now, but will be at the end of the season, I should say. Uh, by the way, I do this one take. No editing, I just fly. And the reason why that is, because I like to spend time talking to you rather than spending hours and hours on videos, which a lot of these fine YouTubers do. Nothing wrong with that. They do great work. I like a lot of them. Gravite and Mr. Dangle and all those guys and the hockey guy. They're fantastic. Love them. Just not my thing. But one, just not my thing is how I do it. I'd rather talk to you guys in the comment section. But let's talk about Huberto for a bit. We're going to look at his numbers and his contract and the whole situation with Florida, which we'll talk about right now. They traded Matthew Kachuk for Huberto and also Mackenzie Weger, if you remember, and a first-round pick from Florida. And people were like, oh, Calgary smoked that trade. Well, yeah, maybe. If they can sign Huberto, and we're going to look at the possibility of that happening as well. And Mackenzie Weger, they're both unrestricted free agents next, uh, next year. Now, it's possible that uh, Florida just knew they weren't going to sign him. And that Calgary just got lucky. Not lucky, but yeah, that, it was really fortunate for the situation. And they're very confident Huberto will sign there. However, we're going to look at an article that makes it, I don't know. And really... I don't know. What we heard about Huberto is, and Calgary Flame fans out there are going to send me an article that says he is open to sign in Calgary. And that says to me nothing, really. In fact, if I'm a Calgary Flames fan, you're trying to be positive, I get it. But that's not the words I want to hear from a guy that I just traded Matthew Kachuk for. I want to hear I am committed to Calgary, and we're going to work out a deal, and I'm sure it'll get done. That's not what he said. He just said he was open to sign in Calgary. In hockey talk, when you're talking about contracts, Huberto is going to do that anyways. He wants as many teams leveraged as possible. So if he has a team in mind that he would like to go to, and we're going to look at that as well, that he's still going to get Max Dollar. You know, Goudreau sort of did that as well. Um, Matthew Kachuk, on the other hand, sort of did it more fan-friendly. But we don't know. We're not sure. But I, we are going to look at the possibility of what Calgary may do if certain circumstances happen. For me, for my take, if Huberto doesn't sign before the season, I'm trading him myself. I'm not even taking that chance. And you say, well, why don't you just wait till the deadline? Well, because we could be in a playoff spot by the deadline. And if I'm in a playoff spot, you think the owner or anybody, we're, you're going with it. You're not going to trade them once you're in a playoff spot, right? So they got to look at their team and say, what are we now? And what are we going to be in the future? And how viable it is for us to go for the Stanley Cup right now. Because if you're going to make the playoffs, you better be a cup team if you're going to lose everybody at the end of it, I would say. That's just me, right? You better be a cup contending team. So is Calgary a cup contending team? 
Now, if Calgary's completely out of a playoff spot, then it's not too bad because they can trade him at the deadline and get a really solid return. However, what's the likelihood of that being the case? All right, let's look at the article for an article first that talks about some things that Huberdo said. Now, I think the the article kind of maybe doesn't look at things. Uh, they sort of try to sell something here. And we'll, we'll, let's just look at it right now. All right. This is NHL trade rumors. It's uh, it's one that I go to quite often. Uh, I, I, I don't know. They're, they're usually fairly accurate, but in this case, they're not really making a prediction. But they are saying Huberto not interested in re-signing in Calgary. There's no question mark here. This is a statement. Now, I've heard this in many other publications. I just thought this article in particular was pretty strong. Uh, but on that note, I think the title is a little misleading. While the attention was on Matthew Kachuk on the blockbuster deal that went down, many people forget Jonathan Huberto didn't ask to be moved out of the Sunshine State. And that's true. He was working on a contract in Florida at the time. Uh, also, he also, according to several reports, and there were several reports here, was not very happy landing in Calgary and don't expect to see the skill for resigning at any point during the season. As the dust settles from the flames, Dave, this is David Dework, blockbuster. I'm told Jonathan Huberto isn't particularly happy with how everything played out. Now, this is what I want to say. He's not happy with how everything played out. There were some informal talks with Florida about signing. Now, to me, that doesn't mean that he's not happy about going to Calgary. He's saying that he wasn't happy with the way it played out. So really, he was saying here, I think he wasn't very happy with Florida. And yes, that he didn't want to be traded. So that's why I think the title here is a little misleading. But the kicker is Huberto only has one season left on his contract, as we just talked about. And uh, teams have already started to call Calgary. That's true. Teams are going to do that just on the possibility that they may flip them. Again, that doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. Huberto and his agent uh, flames more days pass for Huberto to voice their displeasure. Now, from what I've heard, he hasn't voiced displeasure in going to Calgary. All he really said was that... He wasn't happy with how it went down and that he was open to signing with Calgary, which I guess is good. Now, that being said, see, we didn't expect it. So you're going to get a call, but we did. It was a big shock for me, but I'm excited to be a flame. So see, he's not unhappy. It's, it's, it's early, but would be open to staying in Calgary long term. That's the thing, open. Now, players say this all the time. Goudreau was open to staying in Calgary. Kachuk was open to stay in Calgary. They said players do that all the time. They end up going somewhere else a lot of the, some of the time, but being open to sign somewhere is also open to not sign somewhere. And it's not something that if I'm a Calgary Flame fan or the Calgary Brass, I want to hear when you're picking up an acquisition like that. I just think they can ill afford to lose this guy for nothing. So I'm sure they're talking to him right now. I'm sure there has to be some sort of contract talks. They really want to get some idea if he would like to stay in Calgary long term. And for my money, I need to know now. And if I, this is the way I would approach it. And I hope for Calgary's sake, they, they approach it. They call him and say, look, we have people offering uh, your services. Can you give us an idea where you would like to sign? If not for us, we'll try to make you happy. Uh, if you're willing to sign here, we really need you to go on the dotted line before the deadline. Now, if you're Jonathan Huberto, you're like, I haven't even played for the team yet, right? I don't, you know, we haven't lived here very long. We're not sure about the surroundings. So it makes it pretty darn difficult. So what we're going to look at in this video here is, Teams that, if he were not to sign in Calgary, which teams can simply afford 
to sign Jonathan Huberto. In Florida, apparently, he was looking for $10 million a year, somewhere around there. And Calgary was offering Johnny Goudreau $10.5 million a year, and he turned it down. So now, if you're Jonathan Huberto, you probably are pretty aware I know the insides agents talk to each other. Uh, and it was pretty public that Calgary, Calgary even made it public that they offered them $10.5 million. Wouldn't you want that $10.5 million? Right? Well, if you really want me here, you must, you know, I want you, I'm a 115-point player. I scored as many points or more than Goudreau over my career. $10.5 million. Now, it's possible that Mr. Goudreau, let's look at it, let's look at him, or Goudreau, at Jonathan Huberto. He's from Quebec. That's going to come in handy as we look at each team. Thing is, he's 29 years old. He wants $10 million a year. Hence the reason why Florida decided to take their chances with Kachuk, I believe. He's five years younger on a long-term deal at 9.5, which would have been even less than what Huberto was asking, apparently. And they just didn't want to give a guy, no matter how good he is, and Huberto is very good, that kind of a contract until he's 37 years old, somewhere around there. Um, before last year, this was also a career year for him, sort of. Um, he'd never had in he'd never had hit the century mark before, but he was certainly heading down that road much of his career. Uh, he had 92 points one year. Um, he had over a point a game in 69 games in 2020. It's it, He's very likely to be a 90-point player and one of the best passers in the league, if not the best. Could be. Tell me what you think. One of, if not the best passers in the league. So 10 million some, 29 years old. If Calgary can't get him signed, we're going to look at some teams that may be interested in him. And we're also going to look at who would be willing to sign him in the first place. That's really it. These are the teams that would be able to give, do that kind of a contract, I think, and might even be able to give some assets back to Calgary, assuming that Huberto is willing to sign a long-term contract with, with them before he goes to free agency. And this brings up a big issue. What if he's not willing to sign with anybody before free agency? Calgary is in big trouble. But the good news is, and we're going to look at Calgary right now. I think it, I would put Calgary at about 60 to 70% chance. Now, I don't know anything about Jonathan Huberto. He says he's excited about going to Calgary. He is Canadian. You know, I don't know if where in his heart he would prefer. Is he okay with cold weather? In Calgary, he grew up in Quebec, so they have cold weather too. Um, does he is he like the idea of is it like Canadian politics? There's a whole bunch of things that go a law go uh, go into play in a player's mind when they make a decision on something like this. And I don't know all the personal things that Huberto may like or not like. But we'll look at Calgary. Since they lost Kachuk and Goudreau, they do have a fair amount of cap space. Uh, not this year, but next year, $27 million in cap space. They have uh, Milan Lucic coming off the books. I have a feeling they'll resign him, but it's not going to cost them $5 million, maybe a million. To bring Lucic back, I would think. Maybe a million and a half. Uh, Lewis is gone. They're, they did get Uyghur in that deal, so they may have to be looking at signing him. But they have plenty of plenty of cap space to offer Huberto that 10.5 that they were offering Goudreau. Term? I think everybody is shy now in the NHL to give anybody at 29 years old eight years. But... If anybody's more motivated than anybody else after everything that's happened right now, and Calgary is not willing to rebuild, if they're not looking to rebuild, which by all accounts I've heard 
It doesn't seem very likely that they do. They never seem to do it. So they might be the most driven to get this guy signed and just worry about what he's going to be five years down the road in order to keep on plugging away here. Um, for my money, I don't think with Huberto, when you look at the Colorados and Tampa Bays and the New York Rangers that are coming up right now, uh, that they're really a contender, maybe even the Edmonton Oilers, even with Huberto. I don't know their situations as far as sponsors are concerned, ownership and all of those sort of things like that. But I would probably be leaning to trade Huberto as soon as possible. Try to get as many young assets, get many assets from them as possible and look towards a rebuild here. But I'm not sure that they're willing to do that. If they're not willing to do that, I think Calgary may be the best chance to sign Huberto and possibly Mackenzie Weger too. But we'll look at Mackenzie Weger at it for another time. 10.5 million, seven to eight years. Till he's 37 years old. Uh, Calgary Flames fans, you are happy he came. You were happy you got something for Kachuk. But are you going to be happy with that contract for a guy who we don't know what he's going to be when he's 36, 37 years old? Huberto is not the fastest skater in the world. And that's going to drop. Now, there's been other players like Joe Thornton, who weren't fast skaters, and his skating dropped off, but he still played very well until his 36, 37 years. Maybe Huberto is one of those guys as well, and they bank on it and go for it. Tell me what you think, Calgary fans. Should they do that, or should they trade them? And if you think that they should trade them, I'm going to look at some teams, and maybe they could trade them too. The St. Louis Blues is the first on the list. Okay. St. Louis Blues fans are probably, I don't know if they'd be, how they be humming and hawing about this, but I will say that they were in on Matthew Kachuk. They even said they were in on Matthew Kachuk. Apparently, the offer was Tarasenko. It was very lackluster. It was Tarasenko, Marco Scandella, and a first round pick or something like that. And of course, they got beat up by the Florida Panthers. Now, Vladimir Tarasenko asked for a trade a while ago. He hasn't really reneged on it, but he hasn't been pressuring them, obviously, too much either. However, they did ask. He is going to be, have to be re-upped again here next year. And he was apparently part of the deal to get Matthew Kachuk, which I imagine means Calgary is not on his no-trade list. So... You could take Teres, you could put Tarasenko in here and look at what they got next year, by the way. 24 million in cap space. Now Tarasenko comes off the books there as well. And they're also going to have to sign Ryan O'Reilly, which I'm not sure. He's like a 53 point player now and they're captain. I don't know if he's going to get much, if any, of a raise at seven and a half million dollars for his age. I, I don't I don't know. But if they could get Huberto. Sign Riley, Ryan O'Reilly for the same kind of amount. Then they got the problem of Jordan Cairo that they would have to sign. But they could trade Tarasenko. Go for it now. Because if you've got, if you just imagine Huberto feeding Cairo, man, oh man, oh man, that guy can turn a 30 goal score into a 50 goal score. I swear to God. He's an incredible passer. He's done a lot of, he's made a lot of players look a lot better than they are at scoring. And he certainly could do that in the St. Louis lineup. Now, for cap purposes for St. Louis and for Calgary's return, I think there would have to be even more than that. And this would be a deal where Calgary is not rebuilding. They're trying to get assets. They talk to Vladimir Tarasenko. Tarasenko says, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll up with you. You know, give him a deal at eight, eight and a half. I mean, he's a point-a-game player. He still can score 34 goals. Maybe you can get him at eight and a half for, a, 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 um, you know, six, five or six years or something like that. And uh, Braden Chen, Maybe who's got six and a half for a long-term contract. It's a contract that, that is 
it's okay, but how is he going to be when he gets older as well? So that would take six million. Uh, yeah, you don't sign Tarasenko. You do. You do sign Huberto now. Sign Huberto up. He, he already worked out the deal. This would be something where you've already worked out the deal. And you switch uh, Barbashev into the middle for Shen. Vichnevich comes back and play, goes back to the third line. Or Saad. Saad could go down to the third line as well. Huberto goes up there with O'Reilly and Cairo. And then you got you bring Logan Brown up. He should be ready for third line duty, honestly. Uh, and try to and try to work in another center. You just got to find a fourth line center then. And this lineup is stacked, man. With Huberto, he's like a superstar. Playing with Cairo, and then you got Thomas playing with uh, you know, Buknevich or and Tarasenko. Move Barbashev to the middle with Saad. And Koshton, and you're not losing any depth, but you're gaining a crap load of offense. And, you know, maybe people are thinking out their defense is really what we need here. Hard to get defense. But if you've got a top nine like that, you've just increased your top nine. Your top nine was better than it was before. As much as I like Vladimir Tarasenko, he's probably not coming back anyways. And if he can sign with Calgary, you're not really all that giving up all that much, to, to tell you the honest truth. You're really just giving up Braid and Shen when you look at it that way because Tarasenko wasn't coming back in the first place. So tell me what you think, St. Louis fans. Would you do that for Huberdeau? Now, I think this deal would probably happen before the season ended. Now, if it were to happen, or if it starts, I should say, if it happens if within the year or at the deadline because Calgary's out of the playoffs, which I think is highly unlikely with Huberto in the lineup. Um, if you look at Calgary is going to be right in the mix there with Vegas and Los Angeles again and maybe even Vancouver for a playoff spot. I think it's pretty likely actually that they would be in a playoff spot come the deadline. So it would be pretty tough to trade them at that point. Uh, if that's the case, though, you may have to give up a little more St. Louis if it's going to be at the deadline for sure. Next, Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks, the reason why I have the Anaheim Ducks here for the most part is because they have tons of cap space. Uh, they will have tons of cap space, $43 million. Now, they got players that they have to sign in that. Uh, they have Troy, Troy Terry that they, they have to sign. He is a restricted free agent, so you might be able to do a bridge there. Trevor Zegers, of course. I want to go long on that. If you can get him done at $9 million, that would be fantastic. But they've got huge amounts of cap space. They have Klingberg that they could sign, but they don't have to. Shattenkirk they could sign, but they don't have to. And you're going to say, well, you know, they're rebuilding. Yeah, they are. Um, but it's been... Quite a bit of a rebuild now for them. They do have a fair amount of prospects coming up the pipe already. Sam Colangelo, Ben King, uh, in in their in the minors they have Colton White. This should be ready soon. They got a lot of good, so, a lot of a lot of young players, and they have a lot of young players on their roster as well. Adam Henrique is probably coming off. So this is what I say. This is what I think. I don't think Anaheim is looking five years down the road. Huberto would be like 34, 35. That being the case, then maybe you don't look at that, right? But this is a team that is going to have to get, be a contender in the next two to three years, I think. In this market in Anaheim, I just think that they can ill afford to keep on floundering like this. Not to mention – you got John Gibson, who's 29 years old. I mean, that's a waste of a goaltender, and it doesn't look like they're trading him. So that tell the, to me that says that they plan on being good enough to be a playoff contender within the two to three years. It, it just doesn't make sense to have a philosophy that you're going to be five years down the road before you're a contender and keep John Gibson. 
So if you got Huberto, you can go Huberto, Zegris, Terry. In this deal for Calgary, they're looking more on the rebuild side of things. Getting younger, maybe like a retool, because you get you give up Maxime Comtois in the deal. By the way, this is a this is a signed Huberto. Imagine Huberto feeding Troy Terry. Wow. I'll tell you, if you, you saw him score 30 some last year, 37 goals last year, could be a 50 plus score with Huberto. I swear. He's that good. He's amazing. One of the best, if not the best, passers in the league. So, uh, Maxim Comtois, Isaac Lunderstrom, and a top 10 protected first round pick. Is what I would be looking at there. And that's for a signed Huberto. Maxim Comtois. Adam Henri goes down into the second line. Isaac Lundestrom, who I love. I, and when you look at Isaac Lundestrom, as much as I'm sure all, a lot of you Ducks fans love him too, is he going to be satisfied at second line, third line center for a long time? I mean... He's 22 years old. He put up 29 points. He puts up five up five on five points like crazy. Somewhere along the line, I think Isaac Lundestrom's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be what I really want to be here in Anaheim. I could be wrong. But I think he could be a second-line center. So Comtois, Lundestrom, and a first-round pick, and you get Huberto. Your top line is set for the next five years. Terry, Zegers, and Huberto is a number one line anywhere you go. It's amazing. And then you just, and you got Mason McTavish will probably take Ryan Strom's spot where he'll play on the right side. And uh, Adam Enrique will stick around there on the left side. Vetrano goes down the middle. You all of a sudden start having a pretty deep team here. Uh, then there's, you know, we, there's, you got to work on the defense. Maybe you're able to keep Klingberg. Uh, you still got some cap room to bring defensemen in. And I do believe they have. Yeah, they just saw it. Oh, man, you just drafted that. Pavel Mintukov. That was a beautiful pickup. I love that guy. I had him higher, honestly, in the draft. So you do have some guys coming up. Jackson Lacombe that are close to getting ready to be able to take a spot there in the top on defense as well. I I don't know if I would do it. I'd really have to think about it, though. It's I'd really have to think about it because he is going to be 37 or something like that if he signs a long-term contract by the end of this. But for the next three, four years, as they build their roster up and they go for it, having a Hoover, though, is not going to hurt. That's for sure. Tell me what you think, Ducks fans. Sub yourself up to the YouTube channel. Let me know in the comment section. I'll talk to you. I love talking. I love talking. That's why I only do one take and I don't edit it or anything like that because I like to spend my time talking to you guys, not doing all that nonsense. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. This is going to be a very interesting one. The Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres, man. And... I am putting him in here for two reasons. One, they have cap space to do this deal. Two, they could do this if if uh, Huberto Waffles says he doesn't want to go nowhere he wants to go and he goes to free agency, Buffalo could just do this flat out. They could just give Huberto his $10 million for however many years and uh, – you know, they have their top line left winger to play with Tage Thompson. Tage Thompson, the 38 goal scorer at 24 years old, uh, playing with really not the greatest playmaker in the world with Jeff Skinner. Imagine with Huberto. My gosh, man. Having a shot, shoot first center like that with a guy like Huberto is insane. It would be amazing. Huberto is from. Quebec area, which would put him a little closer to home. And if they wanted to do this deal beforehand, let's say, let's say for poops and giggles that 
Buffalo is in a playoff spot or close to it at the deadline. Okay, and I don't think that's completely out of the question here. I think people are really not understanding the power, excuse the pun, of this defense that they have here. It's it's an incredibly strong young defense. Matias Samuelson looks like a veteran out there already. Rasmus Dahlin is taking off in his career ever since Granado took over. He looks amazing. Then you got Owen Power, who looked fantastic for a 19-year-old already. And Enrique Yokiharu. Now, all of those players could be part of the deal here. But in this case, I think they could do something, again, with Calgary. I think with this move, they're going to be looking at rebuild or retool. You could put Casey Middlestad in there. You have a left wing. If, you, if he's going to play on the left wing, having Peyton Krebs may not be necessary. And Jason Paterka will kind of get buried there. So one of those two, Paterka, or Paterka, not Paterka, Paterka, Middlestat, or Krebs. No, sorry, yeah, Paterka, Middlestat, your first round draft pick next year. That gives him two, you know, middle stat. He is, he kind of came around last year. I think he's still, he's got plenty of time to bloom. He's a big center. Sutter could work with him very well, I think. Paterka, I love. I think he's fantastic. I think they'd probably be asking for Jack Quinn, but I wouldn't touch that. And Dylan Cousins is ready to take that spot. So, the first round draft pick in 2023 is going to be what they're really timing for, though, in Buffalo or in uh, Calgary. Buffalo, if even if they are on a bubble, their that middle round pick in, in uh, middle first in next year's draft is going to be really, really solid. Now, let's face it, Buffalo has p- picked a lot of picks. They have a lot of young players coming up as it is already. You got Isaac Rosen, who could be part of the deal could mix and match these any way you want. Uh, you know, they, they've got a lot of guys coming up that they've already drafted. And Ryan Johnson, there's another one. So I think they could get away with this. And they could speed up this rebuild a little bit and have your left winger for the next eight, eight years. What do you think, Buffalo Sabres fans? I have a feeling, my feeling is you're going to be like, nope, I want to just keep on building the way we are, stick with the plan. But this could be the plan. You're, are, you, are you ever going to draft a left-wing guy, as left-winger as good as Huberto? And this defense, I, I'm sorry, but this defense is going to be a powerhouse soon, very, very soon. Buffalo is not going to be bottom dwellers for too much longer. And I even think it could be as soon as this year. Tell me what you think, Buffalo fans. Sub yourself up. Hit the like button. It really helps the uh, the uh, channel to sub up. Gets more people watching the video. Gets more exposure to the video. Allows me to do more of these videos. Next, New Jersey Devils. And this, uh, New Jersey is pretty much in every video I'm doing right now. And why is that? Because New Jersey is in a position where they've almost built their roster. They already went out and got Andre Pilat. Um, I've traded Taser. I traded Miller there. I've traded. I've traded. And now I'm doing Huberto there, uh, because it's a lineup that's ready to bloom, man. They the, Pilat was a beautiful pickup. They. Uh, could be okay just as they are right now. But the defense that they have here with Graves, Stevens, Severson, Siegenthaler, Hamilton, Smith, and Marino is playoff caliber for sure. They still got to fill their goaltending situation out. We'll see what Vitek Vanacek can be like. On uh, many, he's looked pretty good in a lot of. Uh, A lot of the time in Washington, a little inconsistent, but he's only 26 years old. And they have so many players coming up. Where's Alexander Holtz going to play right now, honestly? Uh, 
he they could just wait for Holtz, but is Holtz ever going to be as good as Huberto? I don't think so. I think he's going to be very good, but as good as Huberto, he's not on that trajectory. In this deal, Calgary again would be looking for rebuildish type package in return. I think you would go Igor Sharagovich and oh, first of all, before I go on, everybody's going to be screaming about cap space. Next year, they've got they have to sign Jesper Bratt. They don't have to sign Tatar. They don't have to sign uh, Andreas Johansson. Halla, we'll see. But they have some a lot of flexibility. Thirty six million, and they do have room to bring a Huberto in now, especially if they give up a Sharon Govich in this deal. So let's go back to what they would look like with a guy like Huberto in their lineup. Palat, Hughes, Brat. You could put Palat with Heischer and Mercer. Man, that would be a great shutdown line. Holy crap. I would put him here with Huberto and just feed him. Feed him just have Huberto feed him Brat like crazy. You want to see Jesper Bratt go up another 20 goals. Have a guy like Huberto with him. Sharon Govich is part of the deal. Uh, I would say Sharon Govich going back. Uh, I don't think they could use a right defenseman, but in this case, it would probably be a prospect like Shakir Makamadoulin, who is getting to the point of maybe not having a very difficult time finding a spot in this roster. Calgary loves their big defenseman, no doubt about that. And maybe Alexander Holtz. This is for a signed Huberto. $10 million a year, seven to eight years, superstar left winger. You, don't need, you wouldn't need Holtz anymore with this deal. Uh, they've got so many prospects that a guy like uh, Shakir Makamadoulin is almost becoming redundant in their lineup. And Sharon Govich. Those are young players that are ready to play soon for Calgary, which I think would be they would be happy to have in that respect. Like it could make it so if they are doing a rebuild, it's a very quick rebuild. They can sell that to the Calgary fans. We're bringing in players that are ready to play now rather than a complete teardown rebuild sort of thing. Now, I don't think Calgary makes the playoffs without Huberto in their lineup if he doesn't sign by the deadline. Or by not by the deadline, but if he doesn't sign before the season and they do this deal before the season starts. But if he doesn't sign before the season starts, they really have a take a chance here that they get nothing for him at all. So what do you think, New Jersey? If he's willing to sign there, would you do something like that? Would you give up that kind of a package for a superstar left winger like that? Interesting. I can't wait to hear from you. Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section in my YouTube channel. And uh, I'll be sure to talk to you. And lots of others will. people will as well. Finally, I'm going to bring the one that's on the tip of everybody's lips because of where he's from. And that's the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I don't think any one of these, I'm really not putting him in the most likely spot. In fact, if I would say the most likely spot, I would say possibly Calgary signing him. But that being said, he is from Quebec. They're, uh, so playing for Montreal, like it's like uh, Montreal Canadiens are like a religion in Quebec to most players. And the idea of playing for the Montreal Canadiens for somebody from Quebec would probably be something that they would dream of their whole from the time they were kids. It is very possible that since he was moved from Florida, that his wheels start turning here that he'd like to play in Montreal. Now the question is, what's Mon is Montreal in a position to do something like this? First of all, I think this is more likely to happen at the end of the season. I think this would be basically Huberto walking or Huberto being traded at the deadline as a rental and then Montreal signing him afterwards. Uh, and all through this, there is some possibilities for him as a rental, but honestly, I didn't see too many places that would be valid for a rental possibility. 
I, especially before the season starts. Maybe when, if Calgary's out of a playoff spot, come the dreadline, yeah, that changes everything. But I just don't think Calgary is going to be out of a playoff spot. So I do think Montreal is a very valid place for Huberto. Uh For the most part, I don't know if like they're in a rebuild situation. So he's 29 years old. They're going to give him a long-term contract. But the thing is, he's French-Canadian. Everybody would love him. Uh, they love their French-Canadian players there. I just have a feeling, and not to mention, with Gordon there, when the, bringing Gordon, I know he's not the general manager, but he is making, he is making, he is a big part of what they do here in the philosophy and plan of what they're going to do, and I don't think Montreal. There is any plan at all for Montreal to not be valid to be a playoff contender five years from now. This is looking like a three-year plan. So I think he could use them. I think he could work them in. But I do think that this would be at the end of the year. Then they would sign him to whatever that contract is. You take a hometown discount. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it definitely would be a seven-year contract. He may take a little bit less to go to Montreal. And you better high. I would say Montreal better hightail it in bringing in more guys like Kirby Doc, which I thought was a really good move. But these young guys that are willing are able to play right away. You don't want to be doing draft picks and five years down the road you're a contender with a guy like Huberto who's 29 years old. It'll be 35, 36 by then. And I don't think that's where they're going to go. I really don't think Montreal is thinking like that. It may end up that way, but I don't think that's what the plan is. So, yeah, I think he could go to Montreal. Um, out of the, all of these, the most likely ones in this deal, I think are Calgary or Montreal, probably. Um, but if he's happy with the idea of going to any of these other teams, uh, as far as what Calgary would do, he could go to any one of those teams, as long as he is okay with going with to those teams and signing with them. I don't know his brain. I don't know what his values are. All of those sort of things like that. What is he looking towards? You know, would he sign long-term in Buffalo, an up-and-coming team? Possibly. Anaheim's an up-and-coming team. It all is going to depend on where he thinks they're going to be and how much they can convince him that they're going to be a contender in that time. All right. This has been an interesting video for sure. Gone long like usual. But uh, tell me what you think, guys, and sub, yourself up. sub, sub yourselves up. Uh, it's going to be fun. I can't wait to get into talking to you all. Have a great day. Goodbye.